Hey everyone, Wayne Fox. I've got a Cable Matters Thunderbolt 5 dock. This just showed up. I thought I'd do a quick video about it. First, let's open up the box real quick, see what it's got, and then we'll run it through some tests. Okay, let's see what we get real quick. I assume there's a cable. And yes, a Thunderbolt 5 cable. And we have a 180 watt power supply. Um, it looks to be exactly the same one that comes with the OWC even has the uh, Mickey Mouse plug, same thickness, 180 watts. 180 watts is a little weak for a dock, but considering this dock doesn't really have that many extra ports, should be enough. Let's take a look at the dock itself. Uh, uh, kind of a nice design. Let's go through the ports real quick on the front. We have a power button, and this is three out of three Thunderbolt 5 devices with a power button, which surprises me. We have a downstream Thunderbolt port like the OWC, which I like. We also have a USB 3.2, 10 gigabit per second port, which is nice. We have an audio jack. It's a combined audio and audio out, has the normal uh, SD micro SD slot which is handy in a dock so one of the reasons this is a dock and not a hub is we're having multiple types of outputs we've got an audio we've got some SD card and if we go to the back we have Ethernet the Ethernet is a 2.5 Ethernet here's our power connection here this is the upstream port to the computer two more downstream Thunderbolt 5 ports and two more USB 3.2 ports and this one looks like it might have power delivery. There's a little icon on that that looks like it might have uh, extra power, which might be useful. So I like the design. It's uh, really, it's pretty attractive. It's definitely smaller than the Kensington. Uh, it's thicker, but it's, you know, I think the Kensington was quite a bit larger. Looks like it's a similar size to the OWC pretty much the same size as the OWC, which I've got back here. A little bit th thicker though. Well, I'm gonna hook this up. We're gonna give it a quick test just to see what the things do. I'll be back in a minute when I get it all hooked up. Well, I've got it hooked up. It will not drive three displays. I thought I had three displays connected to the OWC. I'm gonna have to go check that video if maybe I did something wrong because according to everywhere I can read, the Mac itself, even the M4 Max, while it can support four displays, it can only support up to two out of a single port. So when I plug that third display in, nothing happens, I can only get two. I'll check to see if the OWC by chance will handle three, even though even they say that it won't. But in the meantime, we've got it hooked up. I've got ethernet hooked up and I've got a Thunderbolt 5 drive hooked up. First, let's just see if the ethernet does pretty good. Not a great test because I only have gigabit ethernet and this is a 2.5 device, so it should be no brainer. Let's just go check real quick. Oh, well, pretty nice latency and that's pretty typical. I get about that speed. I do have a direct wired connection to the um, modem in the basement. And that's about the same speed I get from my CalDigit TS4 Ethernet. So it looks good. Now let's just check the Thunderbolt 5 disk to see what kind of uh, result I get from it. I should get about, I would guess, about 4,000 megabytes a second because I have two 4K displays connected and that'll cost me a little bandwidth. I know with the other devices, I got about 4,000. Let's check, make sure the right drive is loaded. There it is. And here we go. Huh, a little bit better than 4,000. Uh, 42. Now the read speeds usually aren't affected much at all just because it's not competing with bandwidth for the displays. And it appears to me that even though I'm probably not really 
I could probably get more data to write to this because my 4K displays are probably not really taking up all of the available bandwidth. There seems to be kind of a limit that the chips put on there. I'm not gonna bother disconnecting the displays to see what kind of bandwidth I get. I know I should get three or 400 more, but that's really, that much speed, it's really usually not too big of a factor. What I do wanna know is what about when I connect a Thunderbolt 4, 4 or USB 4 device? If you've watched my other videos, you know that these docks tend to suffer pretty greatly with legacy devices, and at this point, there appears to be some kind of a bug. I was about ready to release the video, and Apple released Mac OS 15.3. Now, it dawned on me that Apple was pretty new at Thunderbolt 5, and anytime some new technology comes to a platform, and of course, new system software comes, there can be issues. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe Apple didn't have an ability to really test this because there really weren't very many docks, or even if there were even any available. So I threw on, uh, OS 15.3, I usually wait a few weeks because I don't want to get hit by a bug, but sure enough, it solved the problem. So we're going to take my OWC 1M2, it's a USB 4 version 1 device, 3400 megabytes a second or so when I connect it directly to my Mac, and we're going to plug it into this dock and see how it works, and the good news is I'll tell you, it works great. Just check it out. Let's make sure we're using the right drive. This is the Western Digital 850 four terabyte black, there it is. And look at this. This is 3550 write, 3400 read, and it's really surprising me. I don't think I've seen this kind of speed out of any Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4 device yet. I'm really happy with this, it's actually pretty cool because through a Thunderbolt 4 dock or Thunderbolt 3 dock, you're not gonna get this kind of speed. This particular device is only gonna give you about 2800 you're going to lose about 20 percent so you're going to get the full speed of the old thunderbolt 4 thunderbolt 3 usb 4 version 1 which is what this is you're going to get their full speed the dock won't have an impact or slow it down now note that with the owc device 35 almost 36 versus the thunderbolt 5 devices you know 40 Three forty-two. Uh, that might not be enough difference to spend the three hundred dollars for this enclosure, or the treeblet, which is pretty good as well, two hundred dollars versus this for one hundred and twenty. If you're going to connect these little devices into a dock, the extra cost to go to Thunderbolt Five might not be worth it. Now you can always connect them directly to your Mac and get that six thousand megabyte per second speed, and that's kind of my plan. There'll be times when I'm moving some large video projects to my local storage versus my portable storage, and I'll plug it directly into the Mac, and then sometimes I'm utilizing these and I'll just plug them into a dock, and I might have something else I need to plug into the Mac. Anyway, that's something to think about. Nice that we don't lose any speed through the dock like we did with the Thunderbolt 4 docks that we had before. So before I move on and actually compare the three devices I reviewed so far, I thought I would mention something new that I just discovered. Someone asked me on a, one of the videos, I'm not sure which one, if I could connect the USB connection on my display to a, one of these docks or hubs. The displays can connect in three ways, and my min, BenQ here has all three. I can connect with a DisplayPort, and that's a DisplayPort connector to a USB-C connector which plugs into one of the Thunderbolt ports. I can connect via HDMI, obviously, direct to my computer, because it's got an HDMI port. Or I can use a USB-C to USB-C cable, such as a Thunderbolt cable, and connect to the USB connection on my computer and connect that into one of those Thunderbolt 5 ports on the hub. Now, if I connect that to the Mac, my Mac itself, it works fine. If I connect it to my TS4, my CalDigit TS4, to one of those Thunderbolt 4 ports, it works fine. If I connect it to one of the Thunderbolt 5 ports on either of these devices, Cable Matters or OWC, it doesn't work. So it appears it might be a little bit like the bandwidth problem that I've been talking about and done a video or two about. I don't know if this is a bug and that's something that might work out, but if you don't have DisplayPort available on your display, you probably won't be able to connect to one of these Thunderbolt 5 docks, and I'm guessing that the Kensington will show the same problem. There aren't many uh, displays like that. 
Most of them have DisplayPort, and you can just use a DisplayPort to USB-C cable, plug in that USB-C cable into the Thunderbolt 5 USB-C port. But I thought I'd better mention that in case that's what you have and you don't have DisplayPort or HDMI on that display, so you don't have any other way to connect it to the computer. So let me take a minute and kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison of the three Thunderbolt 5 devices I've reviewed so far. We've got the Cable Matters Thunderbolt 5 dock in this review, and previously I reviewed the Kensington Thunderbolt 5 hub or dock and the OWC Thunderbolt 5 hub. All three have an upstream connection to the computer, which supplies 140 watts of charging power. For me, the Kensington has this connection on the front, it gets a big thumbs down for me on that. The other two are on the back. I don't understand a connection to your computer on the front. You're gonna plug that cable in, you're gonna plug it in your computer, and when you take your computer, because you're not docking it, you're gonna unplug it from your computer. You really never plug that in and out from the back. That really should reserve, reserve for a downstream port. And as you can see, they all have three downstream Thunderbolt 5 ports, but the OWC and the Cable Matters put one of theirs on the front, and the Kensington puts all three of theirs on the back. So another thumbs down when you wanna connect a small SSD, Easy to do on the OWC and the cable matters. It's right in front of you. On the Kensington, you've got to reach around behind or you've got to leave a Thunderbolt 5 cable laying loose on your desk. The OWC has one USB-A 3.2 10 gigabit per second port on it, as opposed to three in the Kensington and cable matters. More on that in a minute. With the cable matters, one of those is only five gigabits per second, which doesn't make any sense. I don't know why they just didn't go ahead and make it 10. Both of those have one of those ports with 7.5 watts of charging power, but here again, the cable matters puts that on the back, and I use that to charge things, and I don't really want to reach around behind or leave a cable laying. It's great. It's I think my uh, CalDigit TS4, that port has, they've got a 20 watt port on the front to charge things. I charge my iPhone with it all the time. So thumbs down to the cable matters for that. The Kensington and cable matters both have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, they both have an audio in, audio out combination port. They both have an SD and micro SD card slot, and I think that's micro SD 4.0 UHS-2. <laughs> the big difference is the OWC you can get for about $189. The Kensington is running right around $399, over $200 more, more than twice as much. And I think the Cable Matters right now is listed on their side as $349. It's, I think, hard to get right now. I guess the good news is for them, the demand is pretty high. So that kind of leads into the next section about hub versus dock. There seems to be a little confusion. It's actually really pretty clear. I think what makes it a little confusing is almost all docks and maybe all docks have hub functionality built into them. For example, if you buy a USB dock, you're probably going to get some an ethernet port, audio in, audio out. You're going to get some dock functionality. If you buy a USB hub, you're only gonna get a bunch of extra USB ports, so one turns into many. Uh, Hub, on the other hand, really never has dock functionality built into it. And that's kind of the difference. And of course, that means the big difference is the price. You have to pay $200 more over the price of the OWC to get two more USB ports, SD card slot, which my Mac already has, audio in and out, which my Mac already has, and ethernet. Now, obviously, it's nice to be in a dock, so I still have to plug one cable in. But that's why a hub might be really all you need. My OWC hub has a eight port USB 3 hub plugged into that USB port on the OWC Thunderbolt hub. There's eight devices plugged into that. But normally, Thunderbolt or USB devices aren't all working at the same time. I've got two scanners, I've got three printers, I've got a capture card, I've got a couple of other little odds and ends, a little thing that talks to my mouse. And they just don't need any bandwidth because you're not using them all at the same time. So that functionality works really well. And here again, just as I was getting ready to release the video, something changed. I had a little section about the potential upcoming CalDigit Element 5 hub, and they actually announced it today. Now this is pretty nice. It has five USB ports. and they're all 10 gigabit per second ports. They all have 7.5 watts of charging. One is located on the back with the three downstream Thunderbolt ports. It has four of those on the front, but two of those are USB-C 
type connectors and two are USB-A. They're really convenient. Now you might be saying, well, but I need something that a dock has, and that might be the case. For me, it's Ethernet. Other than that, I really don't need it. I've got an SD card reader on my MacBook Pro. I've got audio in for the rare times I need it in there as well. Well, with this hub, I could buy, in fact, I just ordered one for $250, and I can buy a USB to 2.5 gig uh, dongle for 20 bucks. So for 270, I have everything I need. And if you look at these docks I reviewed, their USB is weak. So it might be a better option to go with a dock. So overall, this is a nice dock. If a dock is what you need, not too bad of a choice. I like the fact that you can use a stand to set it upright or vertical. And I do think it's weak on the USB ports. I think it should have at least five USB ports, all 10 gigabit per second. Uh, they ought to have more charging ability. I do think one of the charging ports should be on the front, but it's still a good choice. And if, uh, you know, if, if it fits your needs, it, it looks nice as well. Now there is one thing I didn't like at all about it and it just would take some getting used to. The power button's kind of in a weird spot and as you reach to hold it to plug something in and out, my thumb kind of hits that accidentally and turns it off. I think that power button would be better on the back or the, U the OWC has it on the side. Uh, just a minor nuisance, and I'm sure if I kept it, I would be able to kind of get used to it. Well, hopefully that video was helpful. I kind of had to really jump it around because I had to redo so much of it because of that update from Apple, which fixed the Thunderbolt problems. If you have any questions or thoughts, I'd love to read comments down below. Hopefully you found this somewhat helpful. And as soon as I get the CalDigit and the OWC and maybe the Sonnet done, I'll do a video that gives a side-by-side -side comparison of all the devices. We might find that OWC and CalDigit are also going to have to lower the number of devices connected. That might just be a trend in all of these. I don't know. But anyway, until next time, see ya.